This one comes from Lucas Coffee. He emailed it in. Lucas said, hey, he's been re- recently reading a lot of investing books. Everything from Intelligent Investor, The Intelligent Investor by Ben Graham, and uh, some Buffett books, Education of a Value Investor, The Little Book of Value Investing. There's a theme emerging in some of these titles. He said, um, David, I feel like Benjamin Graham, despite your long history of beating the market, might label you or your style as, quotes, speculation. So, my question is, how do you personally, technically value rule breaker stocks? You already mentioned several times you don't worry about P-E ratios, etc. So, how do you do what you do? Great question. I've been asked this many times over the years. I think I've written a lot about this over the years. Trying to be succinct here and keep this particular podcast inside my defined goal of 30 minutes or less, I just want you to know a few things. First of all, I think the markets are pretty efficient. So, the prices that you're seeing on stocks today are generally pretty reflective of where those stocks should be trading, which may sound crazy from somebody who thinks that you and I should invest in stocks because we'll beat the market. You just heard me say, I think that they're generally fairly priced in the near term. But here's the key. The markets have a real hard time pricing for the long term. So, in my experience, the the pricing is efficient if you're looking inside six months or so, but that's the real fault of the markets. They they're so short term oriented. So I'm generally okay with taking the prices that are being offered every day on the market. Um, certainly, I do use some ratios. I look especially at price to sales as a simple measure. Um, we can talk about that in another podcast. I don't want to get too technical here, but um, you know certainly the price. Price earnings to growth ratio. So, um, you know, if the company has a PE ratio of 17 but is growing by 50% a year, that's better than if a company has a price earnings ratio of 17 and is growing 10% a year. So, these things all influence me, but I don't make valuation per se the way that we gain an edge as investors. I think we gain an edge, at least as rule breaker investors, by looking at the excellence of the company, the importance of the industry, and all kinds of other factors, many of them not numerical. Things like, can the company innovate? What's the company culture like? Who is actually running this company? What is their competitive advantage? None of these things are found in financial statements. And so, for this reason, I think we have an edge. And this is why we beat the market over the long term, not because we look for a certain P-E ratio, or because we screen for certain numbers and have some magic list of screened stocks that we just buy, regardless of the company, because they meet a numerical goal. If that does sound speculative, and maybe it would to Ben Graham a century ago or so, then I say some of us are speculating. But since I've been doing it 23 years or so, and uh, we're often speculating our ways into some of the best companies in America, from Apple to Amazon.com, along with some losers too. We've talked about that other podcasts. Um, I feel comfortable with it. I hope you do too. And if I'm challenging some of what you've read in books like The Little Book of Value Investing and The Education of a Value Investor, I'm happy to do so. And if you end up favoring those more than our own approach, totally understand. It takes two to make a market. As always, people on this program may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal recommendations for or against. So, don't buy or sell stocks based solely on what you hear. Learn more about Rule Breaker Investing at rbi.fool.com.